goddamn tired of. <laughs> this is where I belong. Yeah. 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 Well, originally, I wanted to be an opera star, but I couldn't get into Cal State Northridge, <laughs> a terrible grade average. I went to high school at, at Saguaro High in Scottsdale, Arizona. Yeah, I graduated a half year early. Of course, I could have graduated three years earlier with the education I was getting. Nobody gave a shit. <laughs> My driver's education was exemplary, however. I excelled. I did so well. I'm a great driver. I hate driving around this town. I'm so great. In California, you, you, I know all the back roads, little shortcuts. I can take you over Beverly Glen. Yeah, I get you there in 15 minutes. Peak traffic. Not in New York City, honey. You get on that George Washington Bridge into that log flume, shh. It takes you onto the Cross Bronx Parkway. Make immediate right, shh. Not that immediate. And you end up on some long, weird highway with all the body shop repairs. You got your GPS. Prepare to make an illegal left turn. No, bitch, I'm not prepared for that. Are you fucking kidding me? And then she gets all silent, and about two minutes later she goes, recalculating the route. <laughs> and you know you better take the shit home. You better return the rental. Just take yourself home and stay home for the weekend. No trips out to the, you know, Poconos, or out to Woodstock, or, you know, Rhinebeck, or East Hampton. You're fucked. You're never going to get there. <laughs> I hate driving around here. It drives me fucking crazy. I stick close to home in New York City. You know, sometimes I get a little claustrophobic, but whatever. I know I'll get back out to California eventually where I can, you know, have a week of, like, freedom and, you know, running through the sand, you know, very mamas and papas, 1968. My friend Lotus Weinstock, who happened to be Lenny Bruce's last girlfriend, Lotus Weinstock discovered me. She was a great comedian, died way before her time. Unbelievable. She was best friends with Mama Cass. Mm -hmm. One time, they talked on the phone for 36 hours without stopping, except for, for bathroom breaks. <laughs> How hip is that, your royal hipness? Inside stories tonight at Lincoln Center. If that shit doesn't get you up, up, up. It's a cool night. Come on, laugh. Throw your hair back. Ah! Fake the shit. I don't know what the fuck you want from my black ass. <laughs> sugar bar the other night with Ashford and Simpson. Oh, honey, everybody got up. It was fucked up. There were more talent on that stage. American Idol, which makes me puke and, like, want to retch. Except one girl gets up at the, towards the end before we left. She was like, I'm going to do something a little bit different for you right now. She was wearing a little, you know, tube top, long dress, a guitar, blonde hair. You know you're in trouble at fucking sugar bar, honey. She pulls out the guitar and starts strumming and doing a third-rate jewel thing. And I, and I had Kathy Sharpton, Al Sharpton's wife, next to me. Security! Security! Hurry up, honey. Get the shit done. It was hot. I hate that fucking American Idol. I only watched it for the first time this year just to check in on it. Just so I, I can make a point of reference. They had these... Uh, two performers. It was a big night. You know how they always have a special guest. Big night. Big, big night. Joe Jonas and Demi Lovato. Woo! Kicking into high gear. Demi Lovato sounds like somebody with a back ailment. Oh, my Demi Lovato just slipped. <laughs> they came out all grand. All MGM grand. Thinking they were Eliza and Tony Martin at the MGM Grand in the 70s in Vegas. Oh, butterfly down by the beach, butterfly. I said, don't tread on Mimi's shit. <laughs> Honey, don't be talking about butterflies. Mariah Carey has that shit down. I had to say Mariah Carey because you didn't know who Mimi was. <laughs> You're the Sunday New York Times subscription crowd. <laughs> Get here. Get with me. I don't have to explain who Mimi is on a Sunday night with bright lights and cool breezes. I want the breezes to be super cool. The children are leaving, tiny children. Good. I'm glad you got a little bit of hipness in your life at a young age. It's good for you. I'll go home and be watching them, all that crap on...
Nick at night, Nikki, 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 and all that shit. <laughs> anyway, um, oh, feel that breeze, honey. It's taking me places. <laughs> um, Oprah Winfrey really kicked it up this year. She had actors on actors interviewing each other before the Oscars, which I love. Instead of Barbara Walters, they wanted to, they wanted to like, you know, try something different. They had different combinations of hip, 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 hip people. They had Penelope Cruz, who is gorgeous and so talented and wonderful, interviewing Halle Berry. They were interviewing each other. Halle wasn't up for an Oscar. Penelope, I don't even know if either one worked this year. It doesn't matter, because they're so, like, exotic. Two exotics. Woo! The set might have exploded. Shit. Um, so Penelope, she grabs, she's such a giver. You know, she's open. She's wearing, like, a, a Spanish shawl, a serape. She has her feet tucked under, underneath her on a divan. Super cozy, comfortable. <laughs> Throwing back her Spanish iron, gorgeous black hair. Giving big lips, Spanish lips. <laughs> Giving spicy, you know, jamon on jamon moments. <laughs> I'll take a little bit of jamon on a, on a nice chewy bun. Thank you. The babies are up. The babies are on the move tonight. Babies. I know. We should have done a documentary. Oh my God, we did, and I was tortured by it. Anyway, how much do we need to know about babies, for Christ's sake? I have my baby. I'll get around to that a little bit later. Not too much later, because we're going to keep it super tight and moving and groovy. So anyway, Penelope Cruz, one-on-one. -on -one. Halle Berry, she grabs her and she says, You're so talented. You impress me. You inspire me. Ah! Oh, hey. Now, how you say it when you did the wonderful movie? Uh, how you say, uh, Monster's Balls? I thought I saw Charo sneaking in and whispering in her head. Hey, 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 hey. Murph Griffin, Hermione Gingold, Arthur Treacher. Hey, 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 hey. She's giving Spanish comedy moments. <laughs> Shit is too crazy. Just wrote my Iman is piece for Barney's Windows. I hope you were up at Barney's and saw it. Um, it's so wonderful to pay tribute to Iman because she likes that done every couple of years. <laughs> about 10 or 12 years ago, she had a book that she was putting together about the real story about how she was discovered. Because, you know, the, the whole myth is that she was running through the African belt and P Peter Beard had his camera and captured her like a gazelle. <laughs> so, um, so she had all these people write stories. And my story was that she and I were roommates in Las Vegas. We were both strippers. And we were both discovered in Las Vegas. That was my, my point.